So why are you with us tonight on Only the Truth Matters? Well, I'm here because I'm looking for my childhood sweetheart, whom I met in kindergarten. And she came to Strasbourg because her parents were divorced and we were together for a year and a half, like brother and sister. And then she moved back to Bordeaux to go live with her father. And what's her name? Danielle. And after that, we lost touch. And it, it really affected me because there was such a strong bond between me and her, and it's a shame we got out of touch like that. How old were you at the time? Oh, at the time, we were eight years old. And how old are you now? 20 years old, so is she. So it's been 12 years that you haven't 12 seen each other? 12 years that have been completely erased. And what's wonderful is that when Danielle joined that kindergarten class, it started a year of great joy for you, but 12 years later, you're still thinking of her. A good little boy, a hardworking student. Look no further, here he is. It's Nicholas. This darling child is in kindergarten. Nicholas is six years old, with not a single stray hair. But you see, behind this gentle and worry-free face hides a great romantic. And these first years of school will be illuminated by a little classmate named Danielle. The fairy tale begins as soon as they first meet. They're in love. They walk together during recess, send flying kisses, and share little children's secrets. Love knows no age. The days pass, and two years later, they are still inseparable. Everyone knows them, and their parents are the first witnesses to their loving friendship. But those who watched over them so tenderly and protectively will be forced to separate them. Since they were so young, the adults never expected to cause them such suffering. Danielle's parents move. Will this destroy the relationship between the two children? But luckily, the phone remains a way for them not to forget each other. That is until the day Nicholas says a few clumsy words that he regrets to this day. The young girl will remain hurt by them. The years pass, and Nicholas cannot forget his childhood love. The years pass but everything reminds him of this young romance. Danielle's gentle face, like a burning scar within his heart, always reminds him of her absence. His friends keep repeating jokingly the lines from the song, I forgot to remember to forget that I'd soon forget we ever met. But Nicholas now knows that he wouldn't be able to forget her. The older he gets, the more the feelings he had for this little girl have grown as well. He has not seen Danielle in 12 years. She disappeared from his life, but never from his thoughts. No matter his age, his words for her were always the strongest. Do fairy tales still exist? We will find out tonight. Beautiful story, great story, long story. How did you lose touch? Because one could imagine that after being so close in kindergarten, you could have stayed in contact, maybe send letters and such. Well, uh, when she left for Bordeaux, it all happened in 15 days. She moved in 15 days. And after that, we called each other a few times, and that was it. We were very little, and so even I didn't think it would affect me that much later in life. Do you imagine her taller now? I'm thinking more of a brown hair and blue eyes, but yes, I do wonder what she looks like now. So, Nicholas, you have asked us to find her, to find this little Danielle who has grown up quite a bit since kindergarten, since she is now 12 years older. So, we searched for her, and we have to say that it wasn't easy to track her down, but we succeeded. And as always, it is Rebecca who went to hand her your invitation. Check it out. Danielle lives a few feet from here. Let's go. Hi, my name is Rebecca from Only the Truth Matters. Are you Danielle? Yes, that's me. May I give you this invitation? Thank you. And I hope to see you on the set on Monday. Thank you. So... It's strange to see her again. I'm sure. She's changed a lot. She's definitely not in kindergarten anymore. No, definitely not. But it's the same facial features. I still recognize her. What do you think? She's pretty. She's a very, very pretty young woman. Nicholas, what exactly do you think will happen when you and Danielle meet again on a TV stage 12 years later when you haven't seen her since kindergarten? A friendship. That's what I'm looking for, to be in touch again. 
and that we stay in each other's lives, that we see each other as often as possible, that she comes to my place and me to hers for the holidays. That's the most important, being in touch. But it might be that this one-year story, this childhood friendship, she was your childhood sweetheart. I have a seven-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and I know that she also has little crushes, but does it still hold that same importance 12 years later? Is it possible that for her, it is a wonderful past memory, but she won't turn her world upside down to spend time with someone who lives far away and who she may have forgotten a little bit? That I don't know. That's the million-dollar question. I don't know. I'm a little scared of her reaction, of course. Is it conceivable that she may have completely forgotten about you? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I've been thinking about it all week. If she'll recognize me, if she's forgotten about me, I freely hope not. Remember that when she sees your face on the screen, if she's accepted our invitation, which we will know in just a moment, she won't recognize you. No. She left a little boy who was eight years old, so... Unless you look the same, but we saw in the pictures that you've changed quite a bit. That's the least we can say. So she won't recognize you at all. So try to be very quiet when she gets here, and we'll see if she has an inkling of who you might be. You may stay here, and let's go see if Danielle is in Rebecca's green room, if she has accepted your invitation. As soon as the curtain is drawn, Pascal, Rebecca, if you could please answer Pascal's question. Has Danielle accepted our invitation? Well, actually, yes, she has. Danielle has accepted our invitation. Danielle, how do you feel? A little nervous. My heart is beating, but otherwise I'm good. You studied to be a pharmacist. Yes, that's right. So you might know what people need to take to help with nerves, more than me anyways. No, I don't take anything. It's just a feeling. I just need to relax. When I handed you the invitation, you'd just finished an exam. How did it go? It went well. Yes, should be fine. Tonight is not an exam. Not an exam. Everything will be just fine. May I ask you to stand up? Okay. Sam will guide you. And the truth is at the end of the hallway. All right, thank you. Good evening, Danielle. How's it going? Good evening. Good evening. Please, have a seat. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Where did you come from? Uh, from Bordeaux. Oh, what a wonderful city. <laughs> yes, I agree. Thank you for being here. We made you come all the way from Bordeaux because we have someone here on the other side of the curtain who has something important to tell you. Yes. Are you familiar with the show? I know the show, yes. Have you been asking yourself questions since you first yes, saw Rebecca? Yes, so many. Wondering who? Nonstop, and I have no idea who it could be. You don't owe anyone any money? No, I'm all good. Not a secret fiancé? Uh, maybe a few. <laughs> A former suitor? No. You have no enemies? I don't think so. All right. Would you like to have a person whom we have told the story give you their opinion or a little clue? Yes, I wouldn't mind. Let's check it out. You know, Danielle, the past is always around the corner when you least expect it. Are you the nostalgic type? Very. Very? Really? Very? Yes, very much. You have a good memory? Yes. An excellent one? More or less. That goes back a few weeks, a few months. Or more. Or more. Mm. A few years? A few years, yeah. All right. Do you often look at pictures from your teenage years? Are you still in touch with old friends? Yes, I keep all my photos, and I've been writing in a diary for many years. Oh, really? So everything is in there. When did you start writing your diary? In third grade, I think. Third grade? And now right. I'm working on my 17th one. <laughs> it's a lot. Would you like another piece of advice? Yes. All right, let's see it. You know, Danielle, childhood memories are often unforgettable. What are your most wonderful childhood memories, Danielle? There are so many. Happy childhood? Yes. For the most part? For the most part. So, since you have nostalgic tendencies and you like remembering the past, would you like to know who came here to talk to you? I do. Yes? Yes. Check out this screen, Danielle. The face of the person who has invited you here will appear in a few seconds. <laughs> tough, tough. I recognize the face. 
but he's grown. <laughs> you recognize him? I remember his name, yes. Yes. Yes, it's from kindergarten. Wow. I think. <laughs> I know who he is. He was my first love. I've never forgotten him. Wow. And his name is Nicholas. Can I say his full name? Nicholas is fine. Nicholas. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that more than anything. I might be wrong, but... He still has the same eyes. We are pretty blown away by your memory. Was he your first love? Yes. Yes. And it was painful, but we were little, so... But he is adorable, really. What was painful? Well, my family moved, and so, yeah. Why didn't you stay in touch with Nicholas? Well, we were little. We were in kindergarten, and I moved around a lot. And we stayed in touch for a little while, and then eventually I got a phone call saying that I needed to move on. What was that phone call? It was sweet Nicholas telling me that there was another girl. Some complicated romance, I guess. How old were you? I was in second grade when I left Strasbourg. But when he made that phone call? Towards the end of second grade. So nine, ten years old? A bit younger, I'd say. No, second grade is... So yeah. eight years old, nine years old. Right, Later in the but... year. He called you to tell you but... that he fell in love with someone else. <laughs> but he was so sweet, and honestly, it was because we were young and he was honest, which is We're going to have to watch our kids extra carefully. No, no. No. Was he a Casanova? Uh, Nick the Heartbreaker? I never knew him to be a Casanova, but he's grown up, so who knows? What do you think of him now? He looks charming. <laughs> I mean, now? No, I mean, always. Are you moved? Yes, I feel very moved. Yes, really. Do you want to hear what he came here to tell you? If it's happy news, yes. <laughs> If it's to tell me, no, I would like to, yes. He's the one who asked us to find you. Right. Nicholas, the floor is yours. Yes, so good evening, Danielle. I was shocked that you recognized me. I didn't think you would recognize me right away. And uh, during those 12 years, I haven't stopped thinking of you. It's true that I felt the need to make that phone call because I, I couldn't keep going on like that, just talking to you on the phone and not seeing you. And uh, it was very painful to make that phone call. We had such a strong bond, you and I. And what I'm looking for right now is more of a friendship, first of all. And if other feelings develop later on, that's wonderful. But I'm happy you're even here. And I really missed you. So, yeah. I'm so emotional. <laughs> Would you like some water? Um, yes, please. Why not? This makes me really happy. Uh, as I was writing in my diary, I looked back and I was wondering who it could be, and I did think it could be you, so I'm very happy. Have you often found yourself to be thinking of Nicholas over the years, from time to time? We had a very strong bond, and we were very little, so it's those first loves. There was no one else until middle school, so it was very meaningful. Sometimes adults tend to poke fun at children's romances, saying, who's your boyfriend? Yes, exactly. And it's more important for our kids that we might We think. would hang out every day after school. Can I ask you a very personal question? You can choose not to answer. Do you have a significant other at the moment? No. A fiance, a husband, an ex-husband? Actually, I have five children waiting for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're outside. Good thing he has a big car. <laughs> no. 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 Danielle, may I ask you to stand up and go stand in front of that screen? 
Nicholas came to us 12 years later, 12 years after kindergarten, to see you again. He had a search far and wide to track you down. Must have been hard. He would like to, 12 years later, when you met as children at barely seven, eight years of age, recreate the bonds of your friendship, rekindle that relationship, and who knows, potentially more. Do you accept or do you refuse? Because you know the choice to open the curtain or not is entirely yours. Danielle, do you wish to open the curtain? I wonder... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course I do. After he's made all these efforts. Then let's open the curtain. It's so strange. How are you? I cried. I'm so happy to see you. I really mean it. I'm so glad you came. I'm so happy. Guys, give them some time. Are you happy? Yes, I'm so happy. Mission accomplished? Yeah, I didn't think she would recognize me this quickly. It was hard. We will let you catch up on elementary school, middle school, high school, etc. So in the seventh grade, I went out with this Allen guy. Remember, Alan, you have a lot to catch up I on. want to know all about him. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Rekindle your friendship, and life will guide you on the rest of your We journey. are very excited that our team was able to help you reconnect. It's wonderful.